At InSource, we are a state and federally funded agency established in 1975 as one of the first five parent centers nationwide. Most InSource employees are parents of or have family members with disabilities. We serve the entire state of Indiana by providing assistance by phone and in person and conducting training sessions for families of children with disabilities. We believe in the potential of children with disabilities and want to help the effort in assuring them a bright future. It's important to note that this information is provided for educational purposes of the special education process and it is not legal advice. Because law is constantly changing and applies to individual facts, please consult with a competent attorney regarding any legal measures. This module is entitled Section 504. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973 was the first disability civil rights legislation to be enacted in the United States and was passed to prevent discrimination against anyone with a disability. While the Rehabilitation Act is meant to cover all individuals with disabilities, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act specifically prohibits disability discrimination by programs that receive federal funding, such as public schools, charter schools, magnet schools, many colleges, universities, and employers. Specifically, it says that no qualified individual with a disability shall, on the basis of the disability, be excluded in participation, be denied benefits, or otherwise be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity. Section 504 also requires, among other things, that students receive equal opportunity to participate with peers in extracurricular and athletic activities and to be free from bullying and harassment based on disability. Today we will focus on how Section 504 applies to schools. If you are familiar with the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, and Article 7, you are probably also aware that Article 7 is Indiana's version of the IDEA. Section 504 does not have state-specific laws, therefore all states and territories follow the federal law. The Indiana Department of Education therefore does not regulate or enforce Section 504. According to the Office for Civil Rights, a student with a qualified disability under Section 504 is entitled to receive regular or special education and related aids and services, which are designed to meet the unique needs of the student. These supports and services are then often written into a 504 plan, though a written plan is not explicitly required. Congress did not create an additional source of federal school funding for students who qualify under Section 504. For qualified students under Section 504, the school does not receive money to help them meet students' needs. Congress's tool for encouraging 504 compliance is to base the condition of future federal funds on a district's current compliance. Educational services must be free and meet the individual educational needs of the student. Schools are to have procedural safeguards, which are a set of rights and responsibilities related to Section 504 for eligible students. Each district is to have a Section 504 coordinator, and each school is to have a 504 compliance officer. Parents are encouraged to request copies of their district's 504 policies and procedural safeguards and ask for the names of their 504 coordinator and compliance officer. Section 504's disability definition is broad, and the list is long and important to share. Under Section 504, an individual may qualify as a person with a disability if, one, they have a physical or mental impairment, which substantially limits one or more major life activities, two, has a record of such impairment, or three, is regarded as having impairment. The list of major life activities includes, but is not limited to, caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, seeing, hearing, eating, sleeping, walking, standing, lifting, bending, speaking, breathing, learning, reading, concentrating, thinking, communicating, working, and major bodily functions. If your child has a diagnosed medical condition, 504's disability definition may apply under the major bodily function category. Some examples of major bodily functions include, but are not limited to, functions of the bowel, bladder, and brain, normal cell growth, and the immune, endocrine, respiratory, reproductive, 
circulatory, digestive, and neurological systems. According to the Section 504 definition, the disability need only substantially limit one major life activity. The Office for Civil Rights, or OCR, does not define substantially limits and has delegated this responsibility to the Section 504 team. If a parent believes his or her child may qualify under Section 504, they may request an evaluation. The request must be made to an individual such as the principal, counselor, social worker, or teacher. Requests for evaluation can be made verbally or in writing, though it is encouraged that parents request a 504 evaluation in writing. Email is a good way to request an evaluation because of the date stamp. If the school determines they will not evaluate a student, the school must inform the parent of his or her right to challenge the school's decision. We will discuss these options further later on in this training. In order to conduct an evaluation, a school must have a reason to believe that the child is in need of Section 504 services. If the school determines they will evaluate a student under Section 504 eligibility, mitigating measures cannot be considered. For example, if a child uses medications, prosthetic devices, and assistive devices such as wheelchairs and computer modifications. The plan must be created with the assumption that none of these measures are taken into consideration for eligibility of services. The only mitigating measure that can be considered is eyeglasses or contacts. The school may consider if the student's vision is corrected by glasses or contacts in making this determination. If it is determined that the student's vision is corrected through the use of glasses or contacts, it is possible that the student may not be found eligible for Section 504 services if no other disability is identified. Section 504 and IDEA contain requirements for free and appropriate public education, also known as FAPE. For our purposes, we will discuss FAPE requirements under Section 504 only. All qualified students with disabilities under Section 504 who need special education and or related aids and services are entitled to FAPE. According to the Office for Civil Rights, FAPE means that students are to be provided with regular or special education and related aids and services that are designed to meet the unique educational needs of the student. The basic principles that guide FAPE under Section 504 are evaluation and placement procedures that guard against misclassification or inappropriate placement of students, Parents may request a 504 evaluation if their child is not found eligible for an IEP or if their child is being considered for retention. Schools must conduct an evaluation in a timely manner, though no timeline is specified. A school is responsible for conducting a Section 504 evaluation if there is reason to believe a student needs special education or related services. Periodic re-evaluation of students who have been provided special education or related services and prior to significant change of placement. Provision of regular or special education and related aids and services that are designed so that the individual educational needs of students are met. Education of students with disabilities in the least restrictive environment. Procedural safeguards that include giving notice, opportunity for parents to review their child's records, an impartial due process hearing and a review procedure. School districts must have standards and procedures for evaluating students who may have a disability under Section 504. The evaluation must be individualized. Although a specific process is not required, schools are required to ensure that their procedures do the following. Evaluations must consist of more than IQ tests. Evaluations measure specific areas of educational need which could include speech processing, inability to concentrate, and behavioral concerns. Tests are selected and administered to the student in a manner that best ensures the test results accurately reflect the student's aptitude or achievement or other facts being measured, rather than reflect the student's disability, except where those are the factors being measured. Tests and other evaluation materials are validated for the specific purpose for which they are used and Tests are appropriately administered by trained personnel. A medical diagnosis does not automatically qualify an individual under Section 504, but it would be helpful for parents include this information to be considered in the evaluation process if it is relevant and available. If the school determines that a medical assessment is necessary to determine if a child has a disability, the medical assessment must be provided at no cost to the parent. 
If a child has been evaluated for an IEP and found ineligible, the school can use that testing to help determine whether the child qualifies under Section 504. No timelines are defined in the law for conducting a 504 evaluation. If the school does not complete the evaluation in a reasonable amount of time, the OCR may consider it a violation. The school must obtain parental permission for an initial evaluation. Section 504 does not mention or specifically require parent participation in decision making. However, if the school excludes the parent from the process, the parent may contact the Office of Civil Rights for further guidance. As few as two people can constitute a 504 team. In some districts, that may be the case and may be sufficient. If parents feel more people are necessary, they should encourage the school to have all pertinent people present. For example, it might be appropriate to include the school nurse on the team for a student with a medical condition. Schools often refer to a Section 504 plan as an accommodation plan. However, the Office for Civil Rights identifies that a Section 504 plan documents the regular or special education and related aids and services a student needs and the appropriate setting in which to receive those services. Often, a Section 504 plan includes accommodations and or modifications and must be individualized. The student must be placed in the least restrictive environment. Under Section 504, periodic re-evaluations are required, though no timeline is specified. Section 504 also requires schools to conduct re-evaluations prior to significant changes in placement. OCR considers the following to be a significant change of placement. Removal from school for more than 10 school days for misbehavior. The transfer of a student from one type of program to another. Terminating or significantly reducing a service. If a school expels or suspends a student eligible for Section 504 for more than 10 school days, prior to imposing the 11th day of suspension, the school must reevaluate a student to determine whether the behavior was caused or related to the student's disability and hold a manifestation determination conference. A manifestation determination conference will consider the re-evaluation results and determine if the behavior is a manifestation of the child's disability. If yes, then the child returns to current placement at school. If no, then the child may be removed from school like any other student. Students with an eligible disability must be educated with students who do not have disabilities to the maximum extent appropriate to the needs of the student. Schools must place students with disabilities in the regular education environment unless the school district demonstrates that educating the student in the regular education environment with supplementary aids and services cannot be achieved satisfactorily. When considering a setting other than the regular education environment, schools must take into consideration proximity to the student's home. The 504 team is charged with ensuring that the education offered is free of charge and appropriate for the needs of the student. Important parental rights are provided under Section 504, called procedural safeguards. They require the school to provide procedural safeguards to parents in certain situations, allow parents to examine their child's educational records, and request a hearing and a review procedure. As previously mentioned, schools are required to develop their own 504 policies, which must be written in accordance with Section 504 law. These must include procedural safeguards that list the rights of parents Parents should request a copy of their school's policies and become acquainted with their rights. Families don't have a legal right to be part of the team developing a child's 504 plan. Even so, schools typically try to include parents in 504 plan meetings. During these meetings, parents have the chance to discuss with the school about the child's needs. If a parent does not feel that their child's 504 plan is working, they can request to meet with the 504 team for further discussion. A more formal way to resolve a dispute is through an impartial hearing, also known as due process. An impartial hearing is a formal way to address disagreements on what is written in the 504 plan, such as placement or other educational decisions. This is a short trial where the parent and the school present evidence to support their views to a neutral person who decides the case. This person is usually called a hearing officer. Parents may file an appeal if they disagree with the hearing decision to start the impartial hearing process, parents would send a letter to the school district, formally asking for an impartial hearing. Due process provides the parent with opportunity to participate and permits representation by an attorney. 
to resolve disagreements on evaluation, identification, and discrimination. Parents may either file a grievance with the school using the school's identified grievance procedures or file a complaint with the Office for Civil Rights. Please note that if a parent files a grievance with the school, the parent may not file a complaint with the Office for Civil Rights until the school has completed their grievance process. Filing a grievance with a school is a much more expeditious way to resolve a dispute than to file with the Office for Civil Rights. Except in extraordinary circumstances, OCR does not review the result of individual placement or other educational decisions, so long as the school district complies with the procedural requirements of Section 504 relating to identification and location of students with disabilities, evaluation of such students, and due process. OCR generally will not evaluate the content of a Section 504 plan or of an Individualized Education Program, IEP. Rather, these types of disagreements can be resolved through an impartial hearing. OCR will examine procedures by which school districts identify and evaluate students with disabilities and the procedural safeguards which those school districts provide students. OCR will also examine incidents in which students with disabilities are allegedly subjected to treatment which is different from the treatment to which similarly situated students without disabilities are subjected. An example would be the unwarranted exclusion of disabled students from educational programs and services. To initiate an OCR complaint, a letter is written to the Office for Civil Rights, OCR, for the U.S. Department of Education, stating that the school allegedly violated Section 504. OCR complaints must be filed within 180 days of the alleged violation. Section 504 requires that schools be accessible to students and parents with disabilities, so they are not denied access to the school's programs or activities, including buildings, walkways, restrooms, athletic facilities, and parking spaces. Schools may make accommodations to a student's schedule in order to make classes and other programming accessible. For example, for a building built before 1977 that does not have an elevator or other means for individuals with disabilities to reach the second floor, the school may move classes that a student needs or wants to the ground floor, so the student may access the class. For buildings built after 1977, these buildings are required to have all of the accessible facilities indicated. As mentioned, Section 504 was originally designed as civil rights legislation. It was passed to prevent discrimination against anyone with a disability and provides broad protections against discrimination on the basis of disability, equal opportunity, and the right to aids, benefits, or services, equal to and as effective as those provided to students without disabilities. This means that students with disabilities must be afforded an equal opportunity to obtain the same result, to gain the same benefit, or to reach the same level of achievement in the most integrated setting appropriate. Children with disabilities must be given the opportunity to participate in athletics and extracurricular activities in an integrated manner to the maximum extent possible. Section 504 also prohibits disability-based harassment and bullying by peers that is sufficiently serious to deny or limit a student's ability to participate in or benefit from the school's education programs or activities. This applies to students found eligible under Section 504 and IDEA slash Article 7. When a school knows, or reasonably should know of, possible disability-based harassment, it must take immediate and appropriate steps to investigate or otherwise determine what occurred. If an investigation reveals that the harassment created a hostile environment, the school must take prompt and effective steps reasonably calculated to end the harassment eliminate the hostile environment, prevent the harassment from reoccurring, and, as appropriate, remedy its effects. Schools also have a responsibility. Under Section 504's FAPE requirement, when a student with a disability is harassed or bullied on any basis, this is because the bullying or harassment can result in a denial of FAPE. OCR offers that FAPE may be denied if the effect of the bullying includes adverse changes in the student's academic performance or behavior. Section 504 is broader coverage than IDEA. So if a child is determined to be ineligible for special education under IDEA, parents can inquire about Section 504. 
There is no need for a student to have both a Section 504 plan and an IEP. The IEP is more specific and would include the things contained in a 504 plan. Additionally, IEP protections end when a child leaves school, but protection under Section 504 covers post-secondary schooling and employment if the school or employer receives federal funds. Here are some concluding thoughts on Section 504. It is important for families to know about Section 504, even if the student already has an IEP. Because if the student is found ineligible for an IEP under IDEA, then parents could inquire about a 504 plan. Bullying on the basis of disability, and for any reason, creates a situation where the school must act. Manifestation determination applies to a student eligible through Section 504, which triggers re-evaluation and a manifestation determination conference. Procedural safeguards are in place to inform about rights and responsibilities. There should be a 504 compliance officer in your school and a 504 coordinator for your school district. An IEP expires when a student graduates or leaves the public school. But Section 504 applies to an individual in college and employment for as long as they have or are regarded as having a disability. Section 504 is part of a broad law that prohibits discrimination to any qualified individual by any federally funded program. Thank you for your time, attention, and interest during this time. We hope it's been beneficial. Should you need further information, please contact NSOAR Central Office. Call us at 800-332-4433. Email us at nsource at nsource.org. Visit our website at nsource.org. Or like us and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.